Jill with Julian and a tribute to Mazatlan, spelt M-A-Z-A-T-L-A-N, which is a beachside city in Mexico and one of my favourite places in the world. And somewhere that, even though apparently it's very well known in Mexico, virtually I haven't met a single person outside of being a Mexican that has ever heard of it. Um, it's been all over the news today because it was the first place in the Americas apparently where you could see the eclipse and there's lots of footage from so it's it's a, the way the beach faces is you get a perfect sunset um, and the lots of footage from Mazatlan the of the eclipse showing like Mexicans lined up along this beach promenade and you know and he's screaming in terror when it all goes pitch black as well, which is very amusing. So it was great to see this place that seems like one of the biggest hidden gems on earth. So I went there a few years ago um, on a very long trip through Mexico for about three and a half months. And I did the whole of the Baja Peninsula from top to bottom, bottom to top, and ended up in Tijuana, which I didn't like at all. Plus, it was grey and cold and completely overcast. It's got this microclimate up there. And I really had... I'd been through some pretty nondescript places to get there. Not uh, Ensenada, which was the jewel of that whole Baja trip, I think. But I went through some really grey, cold places. They've got lots of weird microclimates. So it goes from like 35 degrees to... You'll be in another town a few hours away and it's like 10 and windy and cold and miserable. And So I just wanted to really sit in a beachside place and I, just, and I knew that I wanted to sort of go by road through the big cities like Guadalajara, Mexico City and down to Oaxaca way. Um, and this, I was just put my finger in the map in this Mazatlan, which was, if you look at the Baja Peninsula, it's across the water from it on the mainland. And I got there and my mind was blown. It wasn't written up as being this incredible place, but it really was. It's got this eight mile long beach promenade, which is one of the longest in the world. And I just got there and it, it's, it's like an idealized version of arriving in Florida. So there are all these like women in sports active wear, rollerblading along with small dogs on leads and um, it's just the most incredible, like the main beach itself must be about three or four miles long on its own. And then this promenade just keeps going through smaller beaches, each one having its own flavor. And like the last one was like this sort of almost, I think quite pebbly crescent beach where it had like all these ye olde restaurants um, circling it. Um, each one had its own vibe. And I... I was so blown away that I immediately doubled my trip. I actually contacted the hosts of the Airbnb within a couple of hours because uh, I wanted to stay twice as long. Um, it's an incredible setup because it's not a small beachside town. It's about half a million people. And I suspect a lot of people would never consider going there because it's in the state of Sinaloa. And it is actually the place where El Chapo and his mate were. There was the other leader of the Sinaloa cartel who ran fishing boats from Mazatlan. And when I got off the plane, we the taxi went past the prison that El Chapo actually escaped from. So I guess that the the that side of it might make people think that this uh, you know it's incredibly dangerous place. Like everywhere I went in Mexico, it was. I felt safer than walking around Sydney at night, to be honest. All of this violence was happening hours outside of these towns in the hills. You just don't see it. Um, I just never saw anyone. The only time I saw anyone raise their voices, in, it was in song. I never saw anyone even having violent arguments like you would in the pubs in Sydney. Um, it's across the water from the Cabos and La Paz and Cabo San Lucas and uh, San Jose del Cabo. These were like the top murder per capita regions on earth. But when I was there, it was like number one was the Cabos, was the murder rate in the world. 
Um, and then the next place I went, La Paz, was number three in the world. It was like, you would never, ever notice it was it was so pleasantly middle class for what you're going to see as a tourist. But Mazatlan is across the water and is a port city, so it it was synonymous with a gateway point for a lot of drugs that would go up the coast to America. But you're never going to see it as a setup. It's amazing because it, at the north end of this very long beach promenade is kind of like the Acapulco Acapulco of old, where it's all these big international hotels. And lots of places like chains, like, you know, Starbucks and so on, which is actually pretty unusual in Mexico. And the least interesting part. And then you've got this beach that's twice the size of Manly Beach, which is just one of the most idyllic places on earth. It points straight at the sunset. The water is like bath water. It's got, and it's it's not flat either. It's got some waves, but it's not as bad as like somewhere like Bondi and Manly. Um, you just have to sort of pick spots along this three or four mile long beach and it's got huts which are big enough that some of them have got like concrete floors and have like live bands on. It's amazing and the whole promenade all day, all night has, you know, people playing little bands along the way. You can just walk up and down it every day and never get bored. You come around to these other bays where there's a different flavour of life going on and then there's the old colonial town at the southern end, which has been renovated. And this was one of the first points, I think, that was colonised, like, well, like 1750s or maybe before than that. And they have reconstructed it. And it looks like a film set version of Paris, like these cobbled streets and the street lights, And it's just beautiful. So I just wanted to do a shout out to Mazatlan because I've never seen it in the news before. And it's one of the best beach places one of the greatest um, beach promenades, the life and the restaurants and the bars and not just the sand and the sea, which are both incredible. Um, and everyone gathers at sunset. There's like thousands of people every single day. The atmosphere, some really high class restaurant dining scene, um, just one of the best places on earth. So Viva Mazatlan is uh, I just wanted to celebrate it as I finally saw it in the news.